uh, I think a lot of fans have been concerned as of late these last two games with Arkansas's defense, and people keep saying, well, go to the four-man front, go to the four-man front. What adjusted adjustments need to be made defensively, Tom, for this defense to get back on track? Yeah, good morning. It's good to talk to you guys. Um, I can't give you the specifics of what has to happen, but it, it, it comes down to filling all the gaps you know, between the tackles and making sure your safeties are available for the edges and things like that. I mean, I watched all of Lane Kiffin's presser, and it was it was really good. In fact, I thought Sam Kitt, Pitt, Pittman and Lane Kiffin both had really outstanding post game press conferences. Um, Kiffin said that they spent the off season looking at ways to attack a three man front and the drop eight stuff and. You know, I think the, the the big view on that was to um, allow them to pass the ball better. But no, it was to, it was to attack the front with the run game. And what they did, I can't tell you the details of the blocking scheme, but essentially account for the guys up front and then have a guy who could release or a receiver or somebody to get in the way of Jalen Catalan and keep Catalan. Mm-hmm from coming up and cleaning everything up. And that's that was the key to it all. And that's why so many of those runs, those counterplays and stuff broke. Um, and Snoop Connors for touchdowns, and so many of them got big yardage because they were able to somehow account for Jalen Catalan. And so for Arkansas, it's got to be more physical up front. And, you know, the linebackers, they've got to get off blocks a little bit better. And the catalog got to get to, to the running backs a little more. And, you know, I think, honestly, I think, you know, we saw in camp that he was in green a lot. And I, I just feel like he's probably a little more dinged up than what we know. And he hasn't been as physical this year. You know, even if you boil it down to his simplest terms on this defensive thing, if, if the offense goes empty, Tom, and they send five downfield, that leaves the offense still with five offensive linemen to block up three up front. And as a coach, that, that mm-hmm. seems like you got to like those numbers. Now, the, 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 the trade-off is it gives the defense eight to, to guard five, but, uh, you know, that's not what we're seeing most of the time. And what it does is when that breakdown occurs, there's going to be a seven- or eight-yard uh, window there that, that corral or an opposing quarterback can get a run. And that's what we're seeing enough of. People can question Barry Odom's scheme. The bottom line is, Arkansas is not getting the pressure on the opponent's quarterback the way they were a few weeks ago. Adding a fourth doesn't necessarily create that pressure, in my opinion. They were able to get it with three. Just because you put a fourth there, you're giving up someone else in coverage. The difference is the pressure Arkansas is not applying now. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's a, it's a tricky, tricky deal. I mean, what they were doing it, to be successful against Texas, it wasn't, it wasn't smoke and mirrors. It was nice strong scheming, but Kiffin spent the offseason coming up with ways to, you know, to, to, to attack it, and that's what they did. Matt Corral is a moving target. Matt Corral is fast. Mm-hmm. In one-on-one with um, linebackers, he was able to plant his feet and make cuts and get around them. I mean, I think a fourth down conversion was one where they had him, or at least it was a third and long, and they basically had him, and he got out of it. Um, they have a very nice offensive attack. Now Alabama had the the horses and the you know the power to contend with that, and they stopped more fourth downs than Arkansas did. But you know we knew going into the game, Ole Miss would go on a lot of fourth downs, and if they just stopped one more of those, you know it could be the difference between a win and a loss. And you know here's the thing: this boiled down to the one play in in a great classic game, and Arkansas was so clutch. Scoring with one minute left, scoring with one second on the clock, and if they if they get that two point conversion, then you know we're still going to talk about some of the defensive defensive deficiencies we're seeing. But they're five and one and tied for the top of the SEC West, and you know they're, they're a two loss team that is the highest ranked two loss team in the country because people see what they're doing, um, and I, I still believe they're basically ahead of schedule. Uh, they just caught a, a bad break. There was a couple of passes that Corral, you know, he hadn't done a pass to pick on the year, but I think Catalan had his hands on one and Fouché had his hands on one in the end zone that would have stopped uh, scoring drives at the end of the first half and the first drive of the second. 
Yeah, it's a good point, Tom. We were talking about that earlier. Just you got to take advantage on those interceptions when they when they come to you. Now you speak to uh, a couple things that Arkansas had opportunities with. I think about where Rocket Sanders, the only turnover during the game was his fumble, and Arkansas gave up one sack, and and that was the only sack during the game. Uh, um, just momentum was big there. Uh, what I saw from Rocket was a young man as a true freshman that can make plays, and we've seen it all season. Tom, do you think there's any chance that he overtakes Traylon Smith as the starting running back for this team upcoming in the next couple games? Well, I mean, there is a chance, but this is not like Traylon, the way he took over from Boyd last year. Because Boyd, Boyd was essentially got ineffective, and there's something with his weight and his injuries that just kind of led to he wasn't as, as you know a greater running back. Traylon Smith is still doing great. I mean, his touchdown run was just phenomenal. I, he's a great back. He's got some kind of nagging issue, and he went back in the game. But Sanders, he is better than expected. He, you know, he runs a little high, but he's still hard to get down. And honestly, on that fumble, he had been held up, and and I think the officials should probably blow the, the whistle for his progress was completely stalled. So they've got him held up. And guys are just raking, dragging mm-hmm. in his arm. It is even if you've got two hands on the ball. Sometimes, if a guy can touch leather and yank, the ball can come free. They did the same thing on AJ Green later in the game too. So that's something that Arkansas is going to have to continue to practice. It broke a long streak of uh, um, uh, no lost fumbles by running backs that dated back to Alabama game last year. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you touch on kind of rocket and stuff. I, I think what also stood out to me during this game, Tom, is the, the injuries that Ole Miss just inexplicably had. Where There was this one where the guy looked over the sidelines and he fell down. We've had some listeners touch on this as well. How do you stop that? And you're Sam Pittman, this one just an issue this year. It's been an issue since Kendall Bryles has been the offensive coordinator. How frustrating is that for your, your offense and just your football team when guys are just faking injuries on the other team? Yeah, I think it's really frustrating, and it, it it happened a ton of time. But what the what the NCAA is up against on on it is this: if you're talking all about player welfare and player safety, then it's a um, it's a thin line mm-hmm. between trying to take care of them and then trying to to determine which ones are feigned injuries. So, I mean, guys cramp up. Yeah, you know, I did notice that one. It seemed a little dubious. Um, you know, Auburn ran into this when they first started the no huddle stuff under Gus back when. And um, I think Sam Pittman and his staff play what I consider an honorable game. And Ole Miss is running the same type of hurry up. And I don't think we saw any Arkansas defensive guys go down. You know, I could be wrong on that, but it seemed to happen many, many times on the other side of the ball. Yeah. Tom, the, uh, the conversation everyone seemingly had moments after the game and even continuing through this morning's calls and conversation, the decision to go for two and then ultimately the play call that followed that. What, what were your thoughts? And I know you've, you've written about it, but uh, share with our audience your thoughts on how the game ended. Well, I mean, anytime you, you make that decision, they'll be the second guessers. Uh, because I know in my own family, I had one person weigh in, you got to go for the tie, and another, no, go for it. I... I I was on the side of try to end the game right now. Your quarterback is so hot. Um, He had been hard to stop on any of his runs. And there was a three, it was a three-part option there. I mean, he could have done the shovel pass to Dominic Johnson. And KJ said that was muddy in there. He could have run the ball out on the perimeter. But two guys got pressure. I think he could have gotten around those two. But then the guys pulling off their man, he could have put a little bit more pressure on them, I think, by getting around the defensive lineman and going around the edge, and he's still behind the line of scrimmage at that point. Do guys peel off their men and allow him to throw a ball? Um, you had A.J. Green and you had Burks. If some guys pull off of them, then maybe K.J. could pop one in. Um, and if they don't come off their men, then K.J. could probably outmaneuver one other defender getting the end zone. It was a split-second deal. K.J. went with what he felt was his best option. Uh, he was high on a few throws during the game, and he happened to be high on a two-point conversion. I do not fault Sam Pittman and his staff one bit for going for the two-point conversion. I thought it was the smarter play. And in Lane Kiffin, his post game, he, he thought their hearts sunk 
when Arkansas was going to go for two because their offense had no more control about the outcome of the game. It came down to a one-play deal, and uh, they just happened to win that play. Yeah. You know, and you can look at KJ's performance on Saturday and easily make the case that, you know, statistically and just watching the game with your with your eyes that – he outplayed. Uh, he outplayed Matt Corral for a good part of this game, maybe the entire game. And p- people are talking about Matt Corral in the the Heisman conversation. And I'm not saying they shouldn't, but you know, for for some to have the opinion that KJ was one of the the bottom quarterbacks in this conference, I think he has played his way into a conversation. I'm not going to sit here and say he's number one or two in this league, but Tom, he's certainly in a conversation right now amongst the the, the quarterbacks in the SEC uh, in a top five conversation, in my opinion. Oh, I mean, he'd had big games, Missouri and so on, but this was really a coming-out deal. And, and both quarterbacks were just fabulous. I mean, fabulous. Uh, you know, you can dis- disregard the pick at the end of the first half yeah. in the end zone. I-, I don't put much stock into that one. But he, uh, his touchdown runs, the one where he kind of pinwheeled in the end zone, sheer will. That 10-yard touchdown he scored, he juked out mm-hmm. two guys inside, you know, Inside the tackles, he took, juked out two defenders to get in there. He had a massive game. And only the you know, the only faults you could find with it were a few of his passes were just high, like the two point conversion. I saw a deal where he was ranked among all the starting quarterbacks in the FBS, eighty four going into that game. So that's eighty four out of one hundred thirty. That's you know below average. No. <laughs> no, he he proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's got his stars rising. Um, you know, he's got a few more refinements to his game, but he will he he should be every bit the you know Matt Corral level, best quarterback in the conference type dialogue, either early next season or you know at some point, but almost right on par. And it was a road game. You know, they handled the crowd. They handled. That was a that was a masterful offensive yeah. form. Before you go, any early thoughts uh, on this weekend's game? Eleven a.m. against Auburn. Any any thoughts about the Tigers coming in, where Arkansas is favored in an SEC game? Yeah, hard, it's going to be a harder to move the ball, so they got to come up with good schemes against the Auburn D. Um, and uh, defensively, Auburn's going to see what these last two teams have done, and they're going to try to give you a heavy dose of Tank Bigsby and, and company. They ran the ball successfully on Arkansas last year, so the key key deal, stop the run. If you can stop Auburn's run and make Bo Nix have to do his, you know, scrambling stuff and to beat you, you can live with that. And I think it's going to be a massive home atmosphere. And it's a revenge game, just like last week for Ole Miss. This is a revenge game for Arkansas. They got burned. They got the game pulled from them last year. They're going to be out for, for a win. Tom, we appreciate your insight, buddy. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, we'll have a more in-depth conversation about the Tigers on Thursday. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. I look forward to it. See you all. Right. We're Tom. back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to your website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code believe to receive your bonus that's b-l-e-a-v from football basketball boxing right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of these amazing offers for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts